So hard conversations must be had. You got to be willing to have it. You cannot shy away from it. Okay. And that is assistant coaches all the way to head coaches. We're all going to have them. We're all going to be presented with them because kids are meant to make mistakes and they're meant to put you in a corner and you got a decision to either stay in the corner or talk your way out of it. It's kind of reverse thinking. A lot of times, well, we'll put them in the corner and they got to work their way out. No, they're going to make a mistake. <clears throat> okay. We have to understand what that mistake is and help them through. All right, understand you're going to be told no all the time. How many times you went to your athletic director and been told no? <laughs> all the time, right? I live that dream now on the other side of it. Now I understand why they said no all the time. But the bottom line is you're going to be told no a lot if you want to build, if you want to change, if you want to make it right. You're going to tick people off the wrong way. This change is hard. Okay? However, the positives, as I said, when they come back, there's nothing better. Yeah, I'm sure we could all spend hours telling stories about kids that have done great things in the world. Okay? And for the one moment that they take a chance to come over and see you and say thank you, that's what makes it all worth it. 20 years of it, okay? Great memories, great lifelong relationships. And the biggest thing on here is those breakthrough moments. Okay, and I know some of you in here personally, I've competed against some of you in the coaching world, and some of you had some breakthrough moments this year where you like got through that hump. When that happens, that feeling is so awesome, okay? And so remember those things, celebrate it, when the big things happen and the small things. When the dude that's never had a 3.0 before and he becomes a senior and he finally gets it, you better have it out on the huddle or something, okay? You have to celebrate everything if you want to build everything up. Well, I'm busy today, I gotta go do this, and I gotta go run errands and blah, 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 blah. We live in the world of phones, guys. I don't certainly it's wanting you to text and drive, but I'm telling you, you can get a message out that's positive about your program every day if you really give it a shot. Okay, and that's key all the time. Next. So, here's a tool belt. In my opinion, again, this is all Jason Terry opinionated. If you think it's horrible, that's fine. It <laughs> I'm just here to talk and pass on. If you think you want to apply it and want to talk more afterwards, we can for sure do that as well. But these are things that I feel are the tools we need to build if we're going to talk about actually building. Next. First thing, get your family involved. Okay, Some of us are married in here, some of us are not, but they got to be involved if you're going to coach for a long time. And those of you who have been doing it a long time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. you got to get them in the community, involve them some way. My wife hates going to games. Matter of fact, I don't know how many games she ever go to, Rabbit. Yeah, oh, came and count them. Okay. I coached for how many years? She just but she applied herself elsewhere. She made Thursday night meals, okay? And so there's ways to get everybody involved, and your kids don't always have to be the managers, okay? My daughter would hand out the plates on Thursday nights. You know, there's just ways. You gotta be, look outside the box. Everybody thinks coaches' kids want to be the managers. That, that's not always the case, okay? So involve them somehow or some way. Next. <clears throat> this is huge, guys. You have got to let your players lead. They will lead more than you'll ever know. Usually more than we ever give them a chance. Because quite frankly, we don't want to put the work in to give them an opportunity to be in that kind of a position. Because it's hard. It's hard to think outside the box and say, how can I get my guys into a position where they can really have an impact? And yet it's so easy. Okay? The look on this guy's face here. That's it. All right, or over here. That's it. And I get this is one of my sons, but it could be anybody's son in here. And if you get your players to lead and make a relationship, that's kind of like the Dean Smith look for me. If you really look at it, okay? That's the impact your players can have on your community if you build it. If you keep them in a box, it won't happen. Okay? And if it doesn't happen, the big moments come in the games. Sometimes they don't appreciate things. Okay, just something to think about. Next, <clears throat> build your youth programs. You gotta put the time in. I don't know what that looks like. Okay, and a smaller school of Prairie to Sheen, a lot of our guys were cross athletes. We had to be if we were gonna be successful. Coaches came together and said we gotta do it. You got to get them involved. Okay, you got to get them doing something. Speed and strength, in a weight room, somewhere. But, 
I learned this from Aaron when I went to Parade to Sheen. Okay? I was under the assumption until I got there, <coughs> I'm the head coach of varsity, everybody else will do things. And then I go there and he's like the fifth grade baseball president, he's the basketball president, and he's doing this for the fourth grade, and he's probably, he's never home. And then I'm like, and then you watch it, it's like, yeah, I gotta get myself more involved here. Not asking other people, but you gotta do it. And you gotta show it. If you do it, people will follow you. But the programs at Yo-Yo, I don't know why that is. I get, we have years where our athletes aren't great, okay? But I'm sold after now spending a lot of time with those youth programs in Parade Sheen and watching them have success now at the high school level. And two programs, it's all about this. If you want long-term, you gotta get those relationships made before they get into high school. It's almost too late. So I don't know what your schools look like and what your towns look like, and you guys might have great underclass coaches where you feel like you don't have to. Still do it. Still get your foot in the door. Okay? Stop by a practice, get something on the offseason, go to a basketball game, do something, but get yourself involved in the youth. That's part of building it. Next. You gotta hang your hat on something. So these are some things, there's some easy terminology, some covenants, I guess you could call, that I've had in places I've been in. Okay? I've always been, and every football I've been in, this has been not, not negotiable. This is the program, this is how we're building it. Uh, school effort, family, and commitment. All right, every place I've been, that's been it. Those four cornerstones build the house. Okay? 212 effort, we've all seen that before. Maybe, maybe you haven't, but the 212 degrees of effort, that was our prairie wrestling model. Okay? Uh, no excuses. Was in Cordova and prairie football, we talk about the power one. Okay, and that was stolen from Dave Richardson at Verona, but again, we steal things from great people. Dave Richardson is a great guy if you don't know. So, those are kind of some of the things that we've talked about, and you know, great things happen to great people. It's just that simple. Things, little, quick messages that we give, but at the end of the day, I know as a coach, I can go home and hang my hat on that. Because if you don't have anything to hang your hat on, I don't know, I got nothing for you, your hat falls to the floor, okay? So you gotta find something that you're going to go with all the time with your players. All right, next. We're good. All right, really important here. You have to be real, all right? We've all seen fake coaching before and how uncomfortable that can be. And we might have assistants on our staff or we may have watched other teams that have fake coaches or we sit in the stands. I really, one of my pastimes, I, this is my hobby, I tell kids this, I like to sit and watch other teams. I like to watch their warm-ups. I like to watch their interactions. I like to watch how they deal with officials. I like to watch when they win. I like to watch what it looks like when they lose. I like to watch them post-game. Okay, interactions are big for me. Okay, you'd be amazed if you sit and watch all that, how many fake people there are in the world that attempt to call themselves coaches. You got be fake. They see right through us. Okay, we're like a mirror. You cannot be that way if you want to have success. Okay, and that I don't know if that's an aha moment or not in here, but I'm telling you, 16 and 17 year old boys can see through a fake coach. Whether you're not prepared, whether you didn't do your homework, whether you didn't do film study, by Wednesday of game week, they know. And you expect them to go play hard when you're fake. Okay, this has got to be talked. I will. This goes back to we're not trying. We're not saying I can't. I will, as a coach, have your back. Always. Understand they're going to make a mistake. That's part of building it. What's it going to look like when the dude gets caught for vaping? What does that look like in your world? We all want to kill him, right? But is that reality? No. That's not the Dean Smith moment. Sit him down and let him know. I still have your back. I will help you get through this, but I gotta have the same in return. All right, I'll be honest with you. There's nothing again that's part two of worse than watching coaches who aren't truthful with their athletes, and then they wonder why at the big moments it doesn't work. Okay, if you have to make a big call on fourth and one, and you haven't built that trust up and been honest with them along the way, from ninth grade on or even before, good luck. You're rolling the dice. Okay. You got to be honest with them. And three, this one's the hardest, I think. It's holding them accountable. Okay. Why? Because we don't want to be told no. It's just as simple as that. 
Nobody likes to be told no in our world. But you're going to be told no. And so you got to hold them accountable for everything. Okay? And the biggest thing is let them know we're all in this together. So again, those three things are really easy. It's posted in my office. It's really easy to have a conversation with a kid and say, hey, look behind me. And you don't have to say anymore. It's right there. They know. They know it's coming down the pike. It just makes things a little easier. It breaks that ice. Okay? Next. So, mirror check for all of us. Who are you? Ask yourself, you know. Well, what do your peers think you are? You know, are you a hardworking coach? Are you real with people? Are you fake sometimes? Are you soft on some issues? Do you let some kids get by with some things and some kids don't? Do you make your athletic director do the dirty work or do you take care of it for them? Do you do the scheduling or do you have somebody else do it for you? I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay? At the end of the day, I used to be the guy who I really didn't care who people thought of me. And we still have to have some of that, okay, if we're going to be in this profession. Okay? You still got to do things. But, again, it goes back to if you do things right, you're going to be fine. And it's part of that culture building of success. Okay? And it's Fred. Was his name Fred? I think. Oh, Scooby-Doo. Okay? You find the answers right there. It's right here in your hand. We do a hand check right now. We have leaders in action group meet with the Alaska athletes. Hold your hand up every day. What do you see? All the answers are there. Okay? It goes back to trusting yourself, trusting your teammates, trusting your coaches. And where's the issue at? Most of the times it's right here. Next. 